So obviously, URI is one of those that uh, doing the right thing, and promote uh, people of different faith together. And Marcus, of course, doing a wonderful thing. That's why we admire him. Yeah. And I, of course, very much uh, uh, like to be involved with URI. Yes, well, you've studied some, uh, you've, you've actually created some uh, initiatives on your own, within your own uh, culture, some very different ones, and I'd like to talk about those. But within, within the Buddhist mindset, is there any resistance to the URI or the URI style initiatives? Or can you say universally that Buddhists are in favor of the URI? Well, I can't say for all Buddhists, but I could only say broadly, and those who follow the teaching of the Buddha would have nothing against URI. But at the same time, in my book, I call Buddhism is capital B and Buddhism is small b. Sometimes Buddhism is capital B becomes so nationalistic that only my kind of Buddhism is right. Mm -hmm. For those people, even other kind of Buddhism is wrong. You see, mm -hmm. only me, you know, Buddhist is right. The other face is wrong. But for me, that is not a teaching of the Buddha. And by, by and large, most schools, or indeed all schools of Buddhism, would not subscribe to that. Obviously, there must be some who are against this sort of thing. But unfortunately, they are of narrow minded. And I think it's our job, me as a Buddhist, must talk to those people, try to convince them, try to show to them by the teaching of the Buddha himself that we should be open to those of other faiths. As I said earlier, they are our brothers and sisters. Yes, both of you are very prolific authors, and we'll be showing your books uh, a little later on in the show, and we'll be telling you all out there where to get a hold of them. But, you know, you've mentioned something, and I, I touched on it, and you, you did as well, and, and you, did, you did just now with your Buddhism B and Buddhism capital B, little b and capital B. It seems that, the funda that there is a fundamental force that, that we all work against. Uh, and I, when I say we, I mean the, the people who seem to be in favor of peaceful coexistence. And that seems to be the problem of social or national identity, seems to be the force that we're working against. Uh, I'm curious, to, to, I'm curious to, to ask both of you, is that force valuable? Is that perspective valuable in any context? And uh, how do you see this playing out, this force that that so screams for identity that they'll murder for it or they'll start wars for it. Perhaps you can start. Um, I, mean, I think identity is important. We need to be able to affirm our own identity. But I don't think we have to do it over against other people. Uh, and I think it's very important that United Religions isn't creating one religion, which sometimes people suspect. I think it's affirming our identity but then recognising also our common humanity. Now, I think the fear has many causes. I mean, it may be the legacy of imperialism, it may be economic oppression and poverty and so on. And I think fundamentalism is often a reaction of fear. Um, therefore, I don't think denouncing does much. The more we can begin to make human contact and also to alleviate the economic injustices which often cause the, the protest. But my own picture is that we can be true to ourselves and at the same time appreciate others. And I believe as a Christian, I have learned and my Christian faith has been deepened by learning about other faiths, both by reading some of the scriptures and indeed in meeting people who belong to those faiths. And, and you, the question about identity. Yes, I feel the same. I think we have to be careful when we talk about fundamentalism. Don't condemn those who are clinging to something, either nationalistically or religiously. I think one has to be broad-minded and we try to talk with them and try to have dialogue with them. Even if they refuse, one ought to pray. And hopefully, because they also are the people of goodwill, I hope that they also will pray deeply because I think their God also is our God. Although in Buddhism we don't use the word God, uh, but never mind, you know, this sort of thing which is <laughs> yes. some, something which is very, very uh, difficult to define by language. Something very, very important. Something the most absolute, the most wonderful. 
we call Dhamma, you know. Uh, I think if we respect those people, I think that would help. So don't condemn those who are fundamentalists, and hopefully uh, with initiative like URI, perhaps on this day we become friends. Yes. We can then, of course, maintain our identity, respect other people's identities, you see, in diversity, there is also unity. But it does seem to be so primary to the human condition to polarize. I know in American Indian uh, languages, very often the word for human being is the same as the word for the tribe or the member of the tribe. Uh, is, is, there a, is it possible to have an identity without having an other, someone who's separate and opposite from you? Well, my belief is that if we are secure enough in our faith, it is, because that faith, and for me, the love of God, affirms my being, and I don't have to do it, sort of claim that, that love only for myself. But it is true that very often religion is related to national identity, and this will often be uh, economic oppression. But I think there's a Native American saying that um, our family is one circle amongst many circles, and that indeed is what... URI is trying to take up. There will be circles of cooperation uh, around, around the world. Yes. Uh, do you, I mean, is I, identity seems, do you think identity has changed in the 20th century? Yes. Putting it negatively, identity has now been very much enforced negatively by commercial television, the media, you see, which is very much operating under the influence of transnational cooperation. So you promote violence, you promote greed, you promote all kinds of things which I suppose in the Christian term ungodly. Uh, I think this is very dangerous. But I hope people who believe in religion deeply should be aware that consumerism is a new demonic religion. Indeed, indeed. Very interested in uh, exploring the issue of negative consumerism, the negative aspect of consumerism, and we'll explore that in our next episode. This is the end of episode one. Episode two is right around the corner.